So now we're starting to put some finishing touches on our tile. We're starting to wind down with this assignment. And this video is all about our second to the last texture we need to add to our tile. Um, so far, you should have evidence of stamping on your tile, as I do here. Um, evidence of small shapes. Um, and mine still need to be babied a little bit and cleaned up. Evidence of your piercing as well. That should be the first texture. And then also um, you should have carving, a sample of carving on your tile. Nickel thick carving so you know um, how deep to carve, thickness of a nickel. And then coils as well. And I spiraled my coils. You might have a different arrangement of your coils. Which leaves us two blank areas. I have a blank area on the right and I have a blank area on the bottom left. Your blank areas might be in different locations. That's totally fine. Um, also, when it comes to these slabs, I'm going to decorate them later. I'm going to enhance them, and I'll mention that um, in class, how to decorate your decorations. You should also still have some scrap clay um, left over in a small Ziploc bag to work with to make your small shapes, and hopefully that clay is healthy and in a good state. Um, you want to have your paper clip handy and or the toothpick I provided handy. Both will work for slipping and scoring each small shape onto your tile so it stays put. Now we're going to be sculpting with our fingertips a lot. That's what you do with when you're sculpting. You're, you're mostly using your fingertips, not really tools. And so I'm going to individually sculpt a series of small shapes and I will be placing them on um, my tile. One sample of a small shape could be um, something as simple as a sphere. Now if you're going to make a sphere, you want some moisture on your hands um, and you want to use your palm as a one palm as a tabletop and then the other palm does actual rolling. So my right hand, I'm treating it like a tabletop that has a natural curvature to it, which is good when you're making a sphere. And then my left hand is doing the rolling. And of course, if you're right-handed, you're going to probably do the opposite of this. So um, just make, you know, basically a, a, a ball, a teeny tiny sphere in clay, if that's interesting to you, and keep it the size of your pinky fingernail. You, uh, index fingernail is a little too big. You want to use the size of your pinky fingernail as a goal for the scale and size of your small shape if it's going to be a sphere. And I have an army made off to the side, but right now I'm just arranging them. I'm trying to see, do I even like the way this looks? And if I do, how am I going to arrange all the spheres? How are they going to fit in this one section? Once I've decided on using spheres or not, I will then slip and score them into place. So I'm, I just plan on filling in that entire section with small shapes, could be spheres or could be something else I'll mention in a few minutes, okay? But you just wanna keep them small, like the size of a pea, teeny tiny. Again, we're concerned about weight issues. The slabs are pretty heavy on my tile. My coils are adding weight, additional weight to my tile, and the tile itself is relatively thin. It can't hold much weight, so you want to keep those spheres teeny tiny. Now, here's another option. Maybe you, you want to make a cube instead of a sphere. You're going to wa want that cube to also be small, like your pinky fingernail, um, again, for weight issues. Um, and if, if you like the way this looks, I'll ask you to make an army, mass produce, a bunch of little cubes, and then arrange them on your tile. Here's how you make a cube. You take a sphere, and you're going to use both your thumbs and both your index fingers, and you're going to do a pinching technique. So you're going to take your sphere and kind of flatten or pinch with both thumbs, both index fingers at the same time, simultaneously, so that all sides are now boxy looking and kind of square-ish square, square -ish and no longer... <coughs> excuse me, no longer round. Um, you can also tap the cube on your tabletop. Um, that, that's okay to get it to look like a cube. 
that's um, kind of appropriate. And here again, I'm placing my sample cube and deciding, do I like the way it looks? And if I do, I'm going to mass produce more and fill them in all into that one section. Now, maybe you want something boxy but not cube shaped. This is a um, small shape in the form of a rectangle. So it's kind of like a bar. Um, and what this is technically is a coil that I tapped on the table multiple times. I did a tap and turn, tap and turn technique um, to get it to be angular and boxy um, and rectangular versus still looking like a coil, which is round. So maybe you prefer something like this and you just want to fill in with a series of, you know, boxy rectangles. Here's another option. You can make a football shape or almond shape, could even look like a human eye, um, as your small shape. So even a football shape would work as your small shape. And the way you go about making those is you, again, take a ball of clay, have some moisture in your hands, uh, take a sphere, and you're going to pinch both sides, both ends of the sphere. So it's a pinching technique, again, with your thumb and your index finger. And um, there's a finished, completed um, football shape. I would then make more and then um, fill in. So ultimately, you have some, some options. And it's just up to you to decide and then slip and score using the proper tools to keep those small shapes in place. Here's something I personally prefer. Um, I'm going with something that's like a, almost like a Tic Tac candy, a mint shape, or it looks like, I think, Mike and Ike candy. I think that's what they're called. And all it is, is a sphere that I kind of rolled onto my palm to look a little bit like a coil. But again, it, it, to me, it looks more like a Tic Tac candy or a Mike and Ike candy. Um, that you would buy in the store. Um, and I'm just using my index finger to roll my sphere onto my palm so it's starting to look on, take, take on the shape of a coil. So I like the way that looks. And I plan on mass producing those. And I think I already have them handy. Yes, I do. And now I'm just going to arrange them and see what formation I want. How many can I squeeze in? Am I cre should I create rows or columns or some other design? So now I'm just kind of experimenting with that at the moment and kind of laying them down on my tile. And I'm asking myself, do I have enough? Do I need to make more? Do I have too many? So when you're designing this, ask yourself those questions. And again, once you're content, um, then it's a matter of securing them in place. So I'll need to make more to fill in the blank area in that section of the tile. But I like, I like that arrangement. So I'm going to clear those away and start slipping and scoring one by one. I'm going to attach each small shape one by one. And you're going to do that with the slip and score technique. It's a little too difficult to cross hatch, so I'm going to poke holes. Remember, that is your second choice when it comes to scoring. You can cross hatch or you can poke holes. Um, I'm also gonna poke holes on the tile itself and then add some water. I like to score again, just to make sure everything is secure. I'm adding water to the back of my small shape and I'm scoring once more and then just secure it in place. Apply a little bit of pressure just to make sure that piece bonds onto the tile and stays put. And then um, go around with a watery paintbrush and kind of force some water under and around that small shape as well. Again, just to secure it. And now it's just a matter of adding more which isn't difficult, but it is time consuming. So you wanna give yourself time to do this.